Praise the Lord. Thomas Manton IV here. I want to speak about this topic the Lord spoke to me, the power of partnership. The power of partnership. It's a very serious thing. That's one of the least talked about probably. The least understood but one of the most powerful things that could ever be um, operated in. If you don't understand partnership, you don't understand the kingdom, and you don't understand what God wants to do in any kind of deep reality that's going to cause results. Now, I want to say this, that people that want to be partners in something, anything, I'm talking on a very general scale here for a minute, and they, yet they're like on their mission to short circuit it because of other issues that they have, you know? So you need to be careful to follow the tenets of the faith in, in, in a lot of ways. But there's something amazing that is in the form of a package that God concealed. It's a concealed weapon. And it's called partnership. In my estimation, this is the quickest way for people to get blessed. Because God has a way that he blesses. He has a way that he does things. He has a certain way that he shows favor. And a lot of people are just, you know, swinging at pitches thrown this way, that way, backwards that way, <laughs> forward that way, <laughs> trying to swing and hit, hit a hit a hit a hit and they don't know what they're doing. I think people that are crafty and intelligent can really get ahead. You know, the world knows about investments and corporate connectivity and partnering. They know about that. But in the kingdom, there's the anointing that you tap by the grace of partnership, you have to enter into that agreement. I, the Lord, this is very heavy. I feel such an anointing. The, the, this is very heavy. The Lord spoke to me very clearly the last couple of days about this. Um, I want to see it work for people. It's going to become a big part of our, our focus. I wrote a couple of my major partners. I said, you don't know it enough but I want I want to see you become very very rich I'm praying for you to become very very rich and the Lord spoke to me and said uh, focus on that son and pray pray them through and release that grace and we'll have an army of rich people of our own partners with us with me in this work of God in the earth. And we'll raise up things all over the world. It becomes amazingly uh, disillusioning, not that we care, because we understand it. You know, the gift of understanding, as I've said before, is very powerful. The spirit of understanding means, it's, if I can say it in a real simple way, it helps you understand. You just understand how everything is, how people are, how they are, how they're not. Sometimes they shock you a little bit by things they do. You could have people in the church that are half full of the devil, and you won't know it until the anointing turns them inside out. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've seen that happen. And what do you do? You got to cast the devil out. When you cast the devil out, the flesh that it's in or on, if they don't want to be delivered, goes flying with the devil through the air to the dry places wherever they, back wherever they came from. So, you know, 
It's really kind of interesting. So, you know, but when you understand and can see, you know, what's happening there, what that's all about, you, uh, you, you, you automatically don't get swayed by it. You just have to correct the situation, put things in order according to your environment. Then you have mixed up pastors. I wonder what they want sometimes. They say they want something and then they, the next day they don't want it. And I wonder what's wrong with you? You know, take a hike. It, your, it was your idea. Nobody asked you for anything. Every day I get preachers writing me and calling me. Every day. And I think, can they really handle this? Can they really can they really pass through the, the eye of the needle? Can they unload themselves? I'm not talking about money because they don't have any money. You know, people that are all tripped up and you, you think that someone wants your money, you don't have enough to sway them. Don't, don't get, you know, get over yourself. Whatever you give is for your benefit. It doesn't really help much, you know, when, when it's in a small level. And when it's in a big level, that's great. God also uses that for his own purpose. But don't think that you're like, you know, such a big uh, issue on the agenda when you do that because you're really doing a transaction for yourself. And then, you know, people think, well, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. Okay, great. You're doing it for yourself. It's a transaction with God. That falls under the thing of the power of partnership. So I thought... And God is raising up a lot of leaders that, that, you know, a lot of, you know, leaders, budding leaders, people being raised up. Some of you, I'm sure, are watching. Also, listening also that God's going to really make something great out of your life. But you have to uh, go through the process of, of, of the connection. Now, sometimes it's not as hard as you think it is. Sometimes it's just... Uh, uh, how can I say? Being smart to work things according to the system of God and do it that way. But part, part of like the connection with a mentor is you have, to, you have to listen. You have to tap the man's grace. You have to be in the space. You have to show your face. You know, you have to get in the mix. I saw some guy he says, I've been looking for you for years. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm seeing you. And, and he's like going to preach in a small meeting in the middle of some market. I'm sure it smells so bad you'd almost want to pass out. I said, oh, boy, I'm, I'm sitting in my beautiful vehicle. I thought, I thought oh, I'm glad it's you, son, and not me. Praise the Lord. I kind of had that thought. I didn't think about it a lot, but it did cross my mind. Boy, I'm glad you're going. I hope you ate enough ugali or whatever you eat. I hope you got enough energy in your system to go and deal with that. Because the place where it was, I'm sure it wasn't a nice place. But that's okay, you know, whatever. And he's telling me, I've been here and I've been there and I've been here and I've been there and it's time I think I need to expand and go to other places. I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, I, I know they've done you wrong everywhere you've gone because that's how people are, especially preachers. You know, I had one in uh, Nairobi City lied to a bishop from Nigeria. He says, uh, we're going to take care of you. And the, and the same guy wanted me to come and be in the meeting. And I thought, ah, I know that venue. I used that venue. We used to pack it out. <laughs> we used to pack the place out. I used to rent that arena. Packed it out some time back. And, uh, you know, I was doing something else. I'd, I've been traveling internationally, and I was just back in the city. And I thought, ah. So I got my uh, beautiful custom Mercedes and drove to town to the city, got a cappuccino. Now I'm drinking doubles, and I used to drink triples a few a day, but it's too many. Imagine if you had three triple cappuccinos, that's like nine cappuccinos. <laughs> that's a bit much to have in a day, you know, you'd be like a little bit, I can't, how can I sleep? So uh, I got a, got a triple cappuccino and I walked across and I wanted to look in the venue. And I just went in the back, and the ushers were like, oh, man of God, they're like good doing this with their hands. And I thought, just, it's okay, just calm, just, just relax, relax. 
And they said, oh, we want to, you know, usher you to the front. I said, no, 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 just. So I just put up my, my, my radar and I looked around. I thought, there's about 20 people there, you know. And I thought, nah, I'm not getting involved in this. Let me go. So I walked back out in the road, walked back out in my car, drove around. I had this beautiful custom S-Class S Mercedes, black on black, oh my. Enjoying my ride, just driving around, thinking, oh yeah. So my discernment was 100% right. Now this has to do with partnership, because these are people that are really not partnering with God and partnering with anointing, two things. You gotta partner with God and I have a whole bunch of scriptures on that that I, I could read, but I don't want to focus on that in this, in this message right now. I want to focus about the interconnectivity of people, a person with the anointing. Now, of course, a partnership with God, but you, you know that. If you even think twice or three times, you'd be a genius if you think four times, you'd be the genius in the group. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you, you, you can think, well, I have to partner with God. You know, I have to submit to him. He's my boss. He's my master. You know that already. It's the most elementary thing. You don't even have to think that hard to come up with that. But this thing about partnering with, in the gospel, with anointing, oh, it's a far-fetched thing to a lot of people. They don't understand it. So I'm teaching on that here, the power of partnership. We call this volume one, whatever. If I'll continue in this, it'd be great. We'll see how the Holy Spirit, you know, what, he, what he's going to do and say. He'll tell me what he wants to do about it. So this guy said he's going to take care of this bishop from Nigeria who was here, you know, by faith and he was speaking. So many people have been done like this in Kenya. I hear the stories all the time. Some people say they'll never come back to Kenya because the pastors, lying, cheating, con artists, pastors. Praise the Lord. They're just like umbus on the road. You know that's Swahili for dogs, yeah? I know people say you shouldn't say that. Well, I just did because it's true. You get a guy that's going to lie to a man of God who's a man of God, a real man of God, seasoned, an older man, 40 years preaching the gospel from Wari, Nigeria. I met the guy, the sweetest guy you'd ever meet. I felt so sorry, I almost cried. So he says, he said after the meeting, he gave the guy, uh, the guy gave him a thousand shilling note, said, here, go have dinner. It didn't tell him where to go. The guy's a stranger here, he doesn't know. And what are you gonna do with $10, That's the equivalent of $10? What are you gonna do with that? Eat what? Where? Are you kidding me? So the guy was really shaken up and he called somebody that over in Kasarani, some people that knew him or he, he knew connected with, and they said, oh man, oh God, that's so bad. We're going to come and rescue you. Don't worry. So they drove into the city, picked him up, took him to a good restaurant, took, took him to their house, and this was on Saturday, and, and said, he's flying out Tuesday morning. So um, kept him there and took him to the airport. Thank God. How many, how many thank God that God always has somebody to be good to you, no matter if, any, if other people are being evil? So I thought, this joker shouldn't even have a microphone. He doesn't even deserve anything. He's not a partner of God. He's not a partner of that anointed bishop. And he's not a partner of me, because I wouldn't allow it. I, I, I told you, I went and I walked back out, because I looked around. And I'm not getting involved in this. There's nothing here. And when I was in that venue, the same venue, uh, an arena, whatever you call it, th uh, theater arena with, you know, a lot of seats, like a thousand seats or whatever. We, we'd have it packed out and the power of God fell in those meetings. Oh my God. I thought I didn't come back here to sit in this. I said, let me drink my coffee and drive around in my car and enjoy myself. Look at the flower trees and all that. Have, you know, kind of do something with my Saturday instead of this foolishness. Are you seeing, are you seeing what I'm saying? The people like that, that do things like that, yep, they'll be cursed. And it's even worse because if you say you're preaching the gospel, 
Boy, this is good preaching here. This is necessary. Someone lift your hand. If you say you're preaching the gospel and you're, you're doing the gospel work, could you imagine the living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that made all of these beautiful creatures you see on my Facebook page? By, by the way, facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. You see all, every time... All of these pictures, I don't know how I find them. They come up in my feed. It's just God sent them to me because he loves me. To see all these wild, this Duke, Duak, Langor monkey and from Vietnam, from Southeast Asia, has red fur legs, praise the Lord, orange face, white chin, red legs, red, red hair around his neck, silver belly, gray shoulders, White arms, are you getting it? And black hands, and then I look real close at the picture, and its feet are also black fur. Now, who could do that but a master artist? You see, the thing is, like, you, you, you think it was, like a, it was like a painting by someone. Yeah, it was a painting by God, and he made it into a living thing. You're going to play with somebody like that? Lift your hands. I tell you, everybody needs to apologize to Jehovah for playing games with him. Count it as a cheap thing to do your games and you think it's like, you think it's like okay? Oh my. And I don't even want to go further much, you know, some other people have preached on this, I don't know if I want to, but some have had visions of hell and they saw preachers there. <laughs> but me, I'm not going, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm not going. I'm not going there. I also had visions of hells uh, in my walk. I've had visions of hell. I've seen, I've been there, been there. In real, in real literal hell. You say you've been there? Yes, I have. I was there. In, in open visions, God took me into hell. And I don't know, I haven't talked about it. My, it took me to heaven also. Not once, a few times. Someone said, oh, yeah? I know one preacher, he, he, he mocks everybody that talks about that. He's anointed himself, but he's never had these visions. So I think when people don't have that, that kind of thing happening for them, they, they don't understand it and they want to criticize everybody else that does, you know. Although some you don't, you don't quite understand. I just say this, it's really a holy thing. For you to see God, cl be close to him and see him in any way it is beyond what you can even handle in your physical, natural life. It's, it's astounding. I, I, and I don't, you know, I remember, I remember the, uh, a few days ago I was talking about, I was talking about this a, a, a few Sundays ago, I, and, and some, some joker was sitting in the back and he was passing notes around talking to someone. I had to shout and rebuke him. So what are you doing? Well, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ appearing to me, and you're back there talking out loud. What are you doing here? And then, you know, the guy's nuts anyway. This I know. I, I've discerned him. This is a holy thing I'm talking about. You know that guy? Some of you know that guy. You know him. He's a nut job going somewhere to have. It's too holy. It's too powerful. To see God. It's also too powerful, too holy to connect with anointing. Oh my God. To connect with anointing and receive that grace, it'll make you rich. If I were you, you my hands would be up and I, I'd get on my face and start crying right now. I don't know, you can, see, you can look and just listen to what I don't care. Are you all right? Lift your hands and pray. Oh, I hate just looking at people just sitting in a sedentary position when we're talking about something so powerful. You don't know. You, you, you don't know yet. You think, when, and then I prophesy to somebody, like, this is going to happen for you as you're doing this for the work of God. You think that's a joke? Well, it's just a nice prayer from a pastor, from a servant of God, quote, unquote, man of God. No, it's a, it's a powerful thing that will manifest. I have people right now that were real partners. I mean, when I say partners, they really sweated. They sweat to help me to do certain, certain things. 
and they're getting blessed today like there's no tomorrow. Someone lift your hands. I hope, I hope, I hope it can be you. I pray it will be. But I'm glad the Holy Spirit is having me bring this out both sides. You see that? It's good. And don't give me that African look like, oh, you shouldn't talk about negative. I had some pastor tell me, oh, it's, it's like if you say something negative. You know, they, they're, little, they're little weak, mealy, wheely, mealy, weasel, uh, religious spirit gets offended. Get up and take a walk back where you came from, son. I don't need that. Oh, it has to be so polished and so edifying to the hero. You know how they talk like this? Oh, be thou God. Thank you, Father. Oh, just shut up with all that. Jesus, I want to hear the truth, man. I could read the Bible and the Greek and Hebrew myself if I want to. Where's the person that tells it like it is, real life, raw deal, real reality? I'm glad I'm the one to do it. We have to, we have to bring it on both sides, you know? You got to deal the negative and the positive. You got to see what to avoid. So I know you're very good people out of here. You people out of here are very astute, very loyal. You're partners of the ministry. You're great people. I know that. You're rare people. You're different kind of people. But there's a lot of people that out there that aren't. And they're, they're hoping maybe to get blessed. They're hoping to get rich. They're hoping to be successful. They're hoping they'll have a great ministry or a great business, you know. But they don't, know, they don't know how to get it. And I, and I want to say that I got to, oh, Lord, thank you. I got to go further. The Lord is pushing me here. I, I, this, is, this is wild. There's some preachers, like, they just want you to be there for them. They don't care about your life becoming successful. They really don't. They won't share their secrets. You know what, I, I can really respect a man and love a man of God, or woman of God, whoever they are, who can share their secrets, like how to. I want to do that more, not less. I don't want to do it less. I don't want to think, like, I have the secret, and I know how to turn this key, man. And I know how to work with God and this anointing, and his power, and it works for me. And I'm just going to keep all the secrets to myself and be the one that shines on the stage. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's one particular man, and I, I, I felt like a complaint in my heart because I, well, maybe he'll do it. Maybe the Lord will deal with him to do it. He's a good man. He's a friend. And he, he, he's uh, well-to-do financially. And I really want to hear him talk about secrets of business, like how he built his companies and how he built his stuff. Man, if he did a seminar like that, I'd be there. I'd sit on the front row. I'd pay an entrance fee. I'd be there. I don't care what it was. But sometimes the preaching and the music and all the, you know, cultural experience of the way they do it, it's like there's not much, like, information in it for me. I tell you, there's one man in America who rarely does it, but once in a while he does it. And he'll get into talking about principles of how he got where he got. Not just his stories and his testimonies. But I'm, that's a different thing. You know, some people are masters of telling the story. They tell the story over and over again. The story of where they came from, how they did it. I know one man of God, very anointed man, powerful man of God, wonderful man of God. But he keeps telling that same story. But I'm like, dude, why don't you tell people how you do your administration? Never does it. Maybe he has a mandate from God not to do that because he has very good, very successful in the area of his structure. And I thought, there's a lot of people that would need to know this information. They could kind of do the same thing you've done. You've built a great thing. He's built one of the greatest things. Now, you need to be very careful because we all need to be very careful because when someone's built something so great like that and the hand of God is on their life, you need to show it all, including them, nothing but respect. Hello? Honor and respect. But I feel that what's needed for people is they need to know the how-to of what to do, what to avoid, what, what is going to work, and not just see like it's working for someone and you can look at it and go, wow, this is successful. 
But how did you do it? Are you going to teach other people how to do that? That's also a partnership. Now, a definition of partnership, if that could happen, and we want to see it happen more, and I'm, I, I want to do it as much as I can, as I said. The definition of partnership is a formal arrangement by two or more par people, parties, yeah, let's, where's the, where the party at? No, I'm not talking about parties. It's a funny word, parties, right? You think, you think about it, it's a party. Let me say people. A formal arrangement, an agreement by two or more people to manage and operate a business and share its profits. Now that's the, in business, that's the proceeds of what's coming in, okay? They're sharing that. But in the kingdom, you sign yourself up <laughs> to, <laughs> woo, glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. You sign yourself up to be connected and then the profit starts flowing. The profit is flowing speaking, but the profit, I mean P-R-O, P-H-E-T, of course, yes, the prophetic flow, <coughs> P-R-O-F-I-T, the prophets, how do they come? By the blessing of the Lord, Isaiah 48, 17 says, I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit. I'll teach you how to profit. Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says, I'm the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth, to create wealth, to, to do what? To make and manage and multiply. Everybody lay your hand on your heart right now. Wherever it is, if it's on it, don't, don't hit the wrong side. If you're on this side, you're an alien. <laughs> or you're like, who, who made you? Don't do this one. It's this side, okay? Just be sure. It's, I think it's right here, right? Somewhere like here. Can't see it, can't feel it, but it's in there. Pumping away. Lay your hand on your heart and just push there. Push right here. See some lady, you put your hand inside there. That's really nice. That's really good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you put your hand inside and, okay, from this way, yeah, because it's on this side. Push. The connection from the outside, like your hand, is powerful. Your hand pushing on the depths of what makes your life survive and move is the power of the anointing to touch the inside of you when you do something to connect with that grace. Now, a lot of people cut right to the chase, says, you need to sow, you need to serve. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. We first have to understand what this thing is. Huh? We have to, un we have to understand what this thing is. How many know I'm a truth man? I'm not a joker. How many know that? How many know that for a long time? You, I'm not joking with this word, with this gospel. No, 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 not me. I'm not manipulating anybody. I'm not preaching anything so I can work you up so you can, you, you don't have enough to fund me anyway. And if you did, it would be great. Then God's using you. He's going to bless you more. Fine. That's part of it. Yes, serving and sowing, connecting. But first we need to understand what it is. It's the touch of grace, like the right hand of the Father, okay? Coming and putting it on the... Uh, uh, right into your life, into the depths of your life, it's saying, and pushing there and saying, I'm releasing this now into you. From the outside, are you seeing that? The outside force, you by yourself, just stay where you are. <laughs> you, 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 you have what you have, you are what you are, and that's it. All right? Now, you, you, can, you can work principles and get blessed. You can... Pray and hear God and you can do, you know, that's great. But that this, this outside force that's going to come lay hands on you like that and put something on you you didn't have. I want to say it again. Put something on you from heaven, from the power and glory of God that you did not have. That's the power of partnership. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says two are better than one, but many hundreds and thousands are also better than one or two. You know, the Bible talks about two, two by two, 
then 70, no, no, then 12, okay? Then the 70, then the multitudes, and then the 1,000 and the 10,000. There's so many different, you know, numbers of people. So the more, the merrier. Two are better than one. Watch this. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Philippians 2.13, for it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I want to say that non-King James. How can I do it? It's, for, it, it's God that, it is God that is working in you to do his will in your life. But by yourself, you can't get enough done. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a, gr a great reward for their labor. So a partner, in, in the legal definition, is, is some people that come together and they invest in the thing. And I marvel at people that think they have a right because of this Christian principle of freely receive, freely give, you know, kind of thing, and everything's free. No, this is not communism, my friend. You know, capitalism, capitalism is a system of business that God made, not communism. God never made communism or socialism because... That's all a fraud anyway, because those people that want to take from you, uh, from the people, and say they're giving it to people things free, it, it's not free. Somebody paid for it. And God is not in that equation, so usually the whole thing just collapses. Look at Venezuela. Venezuela, their dollar was on par with the American dollar at one time, even a bit stronger than the American dollar. Can you imagine? Oil-rich company, resource-rich company, uh, country, com company, yeah, country, and today they're in absolute shambles. People are taking wheelbarrows of money and they're just throwing it in the dump. They're throwing stacks of cash out the window into the street. Now nobody would do that if even one of those notes had any value. Nobody would do that, but it's absolutely worthless. I don't want to talk about corrupt nations. You know that that they stole the money and made their their currency valueless like Zimbabwe, like Mugabe did in Zimbabwe. That's another issue. I don't think that was supposed to be a communistic thing because they were, they were just there to take, 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 take and abuse and be a dictator and steal everything. And his wife was shopping with a 747, you know, going to Paris and New York and London, whatever, to the most expensive retail high street shops. They, they didn't even try to get wholesale. They didn't even try. They just went... You know, whatever it is, if it's 100,000, if it's 200,000, if it's half a million dollars or pounds, you know, for this, uh, or euros or pounds, for this stuff that we want to buy, designer, everything, just bring it in the trucks and put it in the jet and fly it back, you know, to Harare, I think they were doing. And then uh, when it really hit the fan, it looked like Mugabe was cooked, you know, finally, as I had prophesied, but it took a minute, it took a minute for that prophecy to be fulfilled. Too long, I thought. I, I really talked to the Lord a few times. Said, "Lord, this guy, uh, you know, you said you don't you don't want him there. When is it going to happen? You know, it took a minute. You know, a few years even. And and I think the wife took off. And then they they lie. You know, the media never gets the real story. You know, no media can go through the common man in Zimbabwe and go all through the country and interview how how destitute they are, how much problems they're having. Venezuela, they show some, right?" Even Rwanda, when the genocide was going on, Clinton didn't take it too seriously at first. Ah, it's just those African people there doing their thing. Now they're going to kill each other. Oh, well, you know, welcome to the real world. You know, what, are you, what am I supposed to do about it? And then afterwards, he really cried because he saw the devastation of what happened. But the media wasn't reporting that. So don't believe the media. They're corrupt. You know the term that Donald Trump, bless his darling heart and brilliant head, he calls them fake news. He made the new term, fake news. It's true. It's really true. The media, you can't trust the media to tell the real story. Huh? Soviet Union had to collapse. The Lord also spoke of that. I also prophesied that in 1988... 89, I don't remember when that was, the year, but the Lord spoke to me about the communist thing there uh, in the Soviet Union 
group of countries being disbanded. And I also prophesied over China. China's having a real hard time right now. And I, I just really feel like, you know, people have a lot of opinions about it. Well, they oppress people and they're evil and they're whatever. I think the key thing is that they come, they, they, they're persecuting Christianity because God's not having it. He's not amused. So the plagues of Egypt, like, like the Egyptians, you know, this is very scriptural, okay? This is really in line. If you want to get the best answer out of it, look at the Bible. I think that's the best place to go. You know, everyone has their opinion about what it is, what's going on. It's a business sabotage. Some people said this, this virus is actually man-made. Laboratories, probably true. I, they have the intel. But God somehow, you know, allowed it. I, I just see like it's like a plague. It's, a pla it's like the plagues of Egypt. And someone should go to this Xi Ping guy, whatever his name is, and tell him, hey, let my people go. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Let my people go. I preached with Brother Ewing, the heavenly man, the one who wrote the book, The Heavenly Man. He was the most, most abused uh, pastor. He was the leader of the underground church in China. And he told me, through his interpreter, his, he had a Swedish interpreter who speaks perfect Mandarin. And he interpreted for me from Brother Ewing. We were together, and he said that... Uh, they had 58 million people saved at that time. This is many years ago. 58 million people saved in, from the, in the underground church in China. And they caught him. He was public enemy number one. And they caught him. And, uh, oh, they, they did terrible things to him. Horrible torture. Horrible. Now he, he got out, the Lord opened the prison door for him like he did for Peter, Bible again. One day the, the angel of the Lord came and the, Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke in an audible voice and says, walk. He was shaking. He said, who's talking to me? Oh, is it God is you. What do you mean? The guards are there with machine guns. If I take two steps, they'll blow him, they'll shoot him. And they would. The door opens and a prisoner starts walking through the yard out or out of the gate. Come on. If they see him with machine guns, what's going to happen? They're going to shoot him down. In a second. Not even, they won't even blink or have a committee meeting about it. Just like, he was so scared. And the Lord said, just walk. The door of the prison gate opened. And there was nobody there. And God said, walk. He walked out. And then he says, what do I do now? And there, a, a, a taxi cab pulled up really fast, Whoop! with his tire screeching, hit the brakes, Whoosh! and the guy was waving, like, come, come, come. The Lord just sent the car for him. He got in. He didn't know what was going on. He'd been tortured so bad, he's probably all messed up from that, and he's shaking, thinking, oh, my God. And God gave him his freedom, and then he had to leave China. It was too dangerous to stay there. He's preaching all over the world, telling his testimony. But I understand they accepted the persecution, like, you know, well... It makes them more Christian, you know, and all that. I thought, but all of this is not good. It's not good for people to be abused. Look at Iran, threw this little girl in jail. And they're saying to let her out, it's like one year's salary of their parents' money. They don't have, it's like $2,250 is a year's salary about there for the poor people there. And a whole year's wages. They have to come up with that to get the girl out of jail. Little girl because she was protesting. And then, uh, while I'm on it, and, and Trudeau in Canada is bowing like this and acting, you know, Islamic, whatever, mixed up, uh, to the people that just shot his plane down with like 57 or 67 Canadians on board, killed them all. And here's the guy who's like uh, showing deference and respect to them. And Obama did that. What an abomination. And Trump, Trump, here's what Trump did. Trump blew the main terrorist guy up. Ha <laughs> ha, different kind of guy. And then he said, okay, now, you want to come back with something? You got something else to say? We're locked and loaded, honey. We got our, we got our, our, our military sites on 52 of your most key places. We will cripple your nation in a day. What do you want to do? And they backed up. 
The whole world was saying, oh God, he's going to start a world war. He did not. He took out the problem and did it. Went into the Middle East, cleared out ISIS. Now you got Nigeria. This problem of people being slaughtered there and the government is shielding them. Because they're also of that religion. I don't know what has to happen in Nigeria. Do the people have to take up arms themselves? Maybe I hope they can. Unless somebody comes from the outside. It's a little... The partners in a business partnership invest in the business. They invest in the business. If it's a kingdom thing, you invest in the ministry. So I was saying that it takes some investment. Now, now this is, this is going to be a, let, let, let me prophesy to you. This is going to be a massive end time maneuver. There's going to be a massive end time strategy for you financially. Because I just, you know, the Holy Ghost is methodically speaking this message. I talked about the corrupt pastors, right? I talked about the good people who are investing, who are in business, they're getting blessed. And I talked, I'm talking about the world leaders that are corrupt. And I had this pastor, let me finish the story about that. He came and said, I've been looking for you for years, and he's going to preach. I said he's been to Kasumo, Kakamega, uh, Meru, M, uh, Mombasa, Nairobi. I said, yeah. And I know probably they ripped you off every place you went, and you, you're just struggling financially. You're not getting any money for your preaching because these guys will use you up and spit you out. When it comes to give you anything, they just act like total stingy losers. You know, it's real. Like this guy that lied and said he was taking care of the bishop and gave him a thousand shilling note, which is about ten dollars, and said, you know, go on your merry way, enjoy yourself. I thought, how could you? You, and the guy said on the microphone. It's even worse. The bishop told me, he said over the microphone, this skinny guy, I think he's from Kisumu. I think his name is, was, was uh, well, let me not say his name. Who's bowing down to me and all that. I said, stand up on your feet. I don't need your, don't, don't praise me. I have a boss. I don't know who's your boss, but I have a boss. He's the one that gets the credit for everything we do. Praise the Lord. I'm a messenger. So I've been in, I'm not the originator of the anointing. I'm the recipient of it. Don't, don't give me any accolades for it. I'm doing my work. I'm doing what he's called me to do. To him be all the praise and glory for every miracle, every prophecy, every teaching, everything. Everything that he ever does is all him. It's all him. And I respect him enough to let, it, let him flow and let, him, you know, let things be correct. So he told me, the man said over the microphone, we're going to take care of this man of God. And he said, this offering that you're giving, he's raising an appeal for an offering, we're giving to this bit. He actually said it. I think he said it, something like that. That he's given to him. He lied, lied, lied. L-I-E-D over the microphone in a gospel, so quote-unquote gospel meeting. And if the man's still alive, it's the mercy of God. Some people, like this guy in America, this lawyer, that they made up this story with this uh, weird actress that Trump, President Trump did this and that. And you know, when he was in the world before he's touched by God now to be the president, he's a billionaire businessman. He's probably doing a lot of things, you know. No uh, digression over that. That's kind of like par for the course, you know. If you're on the golf course, you're playing golf, right? Praise the Lord, you know what I mean? But, um, but he said it wasn't true. And it, and it turned out that uh, the, the one making up this game said it wasn't true. Like this uh, Justice Kavanaugh, when they were, because they didn't want the, the conservative guy to get into the Supreme Court. So every devil around America rose up and they made up all these false stories. And this psycho woman that was there testifying, she, at, at the end of it all, she said it wasn't even true. It was all made up. Can you imagine that hell, hell fires are waiting, these kind of people? So I thought, I thought, well, he, he won anyway because God wanted him there. And another one, Gorsuch, another one came after him, and there'll be more after him. So things are going to swing back conservative. And the landslide that should happen in November, we pray it'll be enough to wipe the Democrats out of the House and more in the Senate, that it's Republican and Republican, and they can't mess with Trump anymore for his second term. Lift, I believe that's going to happen. They cannot be always devising and scheming against him because if they lose the House, the Democrats, Pelosi will be kicked to the curb, in fact, by ethics violation, and what she did to rip a speech up, a constitutional event, 
That's a disgrace to America, not just to a man. She disgraced the, the, the House of Representatives in the office. She should, be, she should be censured and thrown out of office for that. But of course, they're going to protect each other because they have the Democratic majority. Let them lose it in Jesus' name, and Trump could do his work for America the next four years without all this nonsense going on. The Russian collusion was a witch hunt and a hoax. This Ukrainian thing was a hoax. Now they're trying to say, oh, he's trying to interfere in the, ca in the case against uh, one of his friends. Or well, they came against him. He has a right to say what he can say. He's, free speech is supposed to be still free in the world. But with these Democrats, these Democrats, you don't know what they're going to do, right? So here's the point what I'm making here. You need to understand something. The world does not have your best interests at heart all the time. In fact, most of the time, they don't. If you're in Canada and you want to trust in a Trudeau, if you're in America and you want to trust in a Democrat, Democrat, or you're in uh, Iran and you want to trust in the Ayatollah, who throws a little girl in jail, what a torturous fool. If you want to trust in, now thank God for Donald Trump because he, he's, he's accepted the Lord and he's fronting against everything that's evil, against the gospel, and he's standing up for the church and for what's right. That, that's an amazing man. Now it's happening in England. It'll happen more in England. Although I hope Boris is a Christian, but he's a conservative guy. How he was elected, it's a miracle. And you have Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil, who God had me prophesy that he would win the presidency, and he did. And now he's making a public confession. Jesus is Lord of his life. He's born again, and Jesus is Lord of Brazil. And Brazil's become the hotbed of revival. Now, they've got a lot of crazy things going on in Brazil, too. I have friends there, and I've been there myself recently. It was a bit, but, but, but as far as, like, the gospel and the power of good meetings and revival, it's happening there. And that's going to happen in more nations. I pray it's going to happen in Europe. It's going to happen in Asia. It's going to happen in America more. It's going to happen all over the world. Thank you. And, and we need to pray that the pastors in America stand up. We need to pray for the pastors in Kenya that they repent. Not repent and cry and go have a meeting somewhere and act like they're crying and they don't change anything they're doing, but they get their life straight. This also has to do with the power of partnership because you gotta, you gotta connect with someone who's anointed if you wanna receive the anointing. The mantle for wealth creation is on my life and ministry. It's, it's tangible. If people can tap that grace, so much is gonna happen for them. But this is an end-time strategy. Man. You're living in a wicked world. Remember Isaiah 60 said, Arise and shine, for your light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The gross darkness covers the earth. My light shall be seen upon you. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. So you're rising. It's you and God. That's the partnership with God, of course. But you have to be in his presence and in the glory in the grossly dark world we're living in. It's the only way. So financially, you need to understand how to work this thing. Write that down somewhere. I need to understand and find out how to work this thing called partnership. So the world doesn't really have your best interest. And what, you know, it's prophesied that doom and disaster is going to come on the earth. So what are you going to do when that time comes? If there is an economic disaster somewhere. Lord have mercy. And again, could you imagine people, now this joker that was lying over the microphone and all, he doesn't really have a ministry, he has a small thing. But let's say you have churches, that people go to churches here in Kenya, and they're living under a corrupt person who's just a self-aggrandizing, greedy person. Wow. Is that part, you want to partner with that? And it's not even preached. All these other things are preached. Screaming, God's going to give you a miracle. You know, connect, you know, uh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Or some Bible stories that really are not that relevant as far as information for your life today. Although they're, they're, you can extract things from them. But to stand up and tell a, read from the, uh, a story from the Bible and then not take it and make it real in reality, principle-wise, to the, to the hearer now, 
nice to listen to, wonderful, but what, how is it going to change your life and your walk? How is that going to happen? Just by listening to a, a lesson like that, a speech like that. So I know there's a lot of people, you know, you, and people are clever. These, these guys are clever. They know how to do the music, the song, and the dance, and the shouting, and the what, and then people come, and, 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 but are they really getting blessed? Someone needs to interview people. They need to interview people and ask them, has your life changed since you've been a part of this church? Let me see your bank statements. Do you have a bank account? <laughs> let me see. Let me see your business state. Let me see your business plan. Some people, I tell you, I want to prophesy, you need to be in business. You need to do business. You need to be in business. I mean business. Jane, you need to be in business. You need to have a business. I, somebody else now, they're slaving, a friend of mine, they're slaving for a, a good person. They're slaving for this company. They're making them so much money. I thought, well, what, what about you? This is, it. That is, that is not kingdom now. It's not church, okay? It's not ministry. This is, uh, this is business, you know? They work as long as they got the energy. And the day, if, the, if the day came, they didn't. They'd have to find somebody else, and then all that time is gone. Whatever you made, you made. I hope you were happy. It wasn't much. So I told them, I said, take the contacts of the whole thing. They said, well, I wish they would franchise this outlet company. I said, well, they probably won't, because I think, look, look at all you're doing for them. If you said, hey, give me a franchise, let me benefit, they'd probably say no, because they just take the chance to think that they're going to keep slaving for you. Taskmasters and oppressors, that's what they do. Even Pelosi and Pencil Neck and Penguin, PPP, right? In the, in the, in the Congress, yeah? These jackals from hell. They went for it anyway, even though the Senate was going to knock it down. They said, we still have to take our chance because they're arrogant. They're possessed. They're evil. The people that like that, they're going to push the envelope and hope it's going to work for them, even though it may not. You know what I mean? So this is what I'm talking about. So the way out of all this is to connect with God and his anointing. And Isaiah 48, 17, and I prophesy this over people every day of my life. I speak this word over people. I am the Lord your God who teach you to profit. I will help you to profit in your business, in your life, in your financial life. My God, I feel the anointing. Yeah. That's the will of God. So how do you get that to be activated? Okay, there's the service and the sowing and the connection. Yeah, yeah. You need to sow into the grace. Absolutely, do it. Tithing, giving, first fruits. Honor, but, but, but we need to first understand, as I was saying, what this is, to, how it works. The connection factor. Luke 137 said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. But Jesus also said in John 15, without me you can do nothing. I was just at this place and I saw this little Indian boy screaming on the escalator and he was beating his father, punching him in the stomach and the father was laughing. I thought, this kid. Is he going to be okay when he grows up? I felt like telling the kid, hey, be quiet. I didn't do it. I almost did. Stop making all that noise. You're out of control. And his father wasn't grabbing him, saying, hey, you can't do that. He's laughing. The kid's punching him and crying, screaming, trying, like wrestling, like a, having a temper tantrum. And the father was laughing. I thought, well, your house. And I thought, Indi they, were, they, were, they were of the Indian persuasion, you know? How do you call it? Mohindi? So I thought, not my circus, not my monkeys, yeah? Uh, that's not my, the house is not my circus, right? The kids are not my monkeys, yeah? I got to tell a funny story. Ah, I'm getting reminded. The other day I was in a, in a mall and I was coming out and all of a sudden I'm pulling up to the gate where you exit, you know? <laughs> and his, I heard this voice of this guy screaming like a fool. Whoa, whoa, so loud. You could feel the tension in the air, anger, like demons of anger, you know. Really demonic. So, so uh, 
uh, he's screaming, screaming, screaming. So I just, I didn't pull right up behind the car. I stayed back a little bit. I thought, I don't know what's going on here. You know what I mean? So, I mean let, me, let me just wait a minute. Let me stay back a little bit. So finally, the car jolts like this. And I wasn't really paying attention. I think I was looking at my phone. So I didn't really see the, what happened. But the guy drove through the gate. Do you know the gate thing that comes down? He just, in an SUV, he just drove right through it. And then I get up to it, and here's this little, here's this little Kenyan lady. It's a very funny look on her face. She looked really funny, you know. And she, she's holding this wire, like a metal wire, and she's pulling it like this with her hand. And to hold the little, the gate like up at the top so my, my big vehicle will be able to pass through. And I'm going out, and I looked at her, and I said, I looked at her, and I just went, what's going on here? What was that about? So I said, the guy drove through the gate. She made this funny little smile, like nervous smile, like, I said, what kind of person was that? Are you kidding me? She said, Moindi. <laughs> I laughed so hard, I nearly fell down. I nearly fell off my seat. I was like, Moindi, a crazy Moindi drove through the gate. So she had to hold the wire with her hand all the way so the thing would be up so my car could get through. I thought, no, I've seen everything. But, but I guess in that family that, you know, the kid was screaming, they'll get through it, you know. They're very community-oriented. They're partnering together. People of other religions do this. People that... I mean, you could go to a place and they call it an Indian thing and you'll see all the other religions there. People all shrouded up, the Muslims come, the Hindus are there, they're all there and they're all scurrying around. I thought, I don't think I saw one Christian. If a Christian was there, they're hiding, you know, they just look like a normal person. But all these people in their religious garb and their other religions, they're all there, flaunting all that stuff. You know those people that wear the black thing up to their eyes and then the lady will also have glasses on? I thought, how can you even see, bless God? We can't see you. Can you see me? Praise the Lord. You know, John Cena. You can't see me. Da, 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 da. Oh, he's going to hit the guy. You can't see me, you know? Like, can you? I want to do that. I want to do the John Cena to these people. Can you see me? How do you even see out of that thing? It even covers their nose all the way up to here. Little slits like this for their eyes, you know? Jesus in heaven. But they're community oriented. And it works for them. And they tell their people, this is powerful, and they tell their people, we're not of those other people, don't talk to them. Stand in a supermarket and try to talk to a, 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 a Mohindi kid, Indian, Mohindi, I like the way you say it, Mohindi. Try to talk to him. The kid will look at you like they want to smile, but then he, his eyes turn this way and he thinks and he goes, no. And he shies away and goes back and hugs the leg of his mother or father because he was told, don't talk to those people. Those are not our people. And they grow themselves up in their thing and they do their stuff together. I met this guy the other day. He's like a, he has a big computer company and he wears rings on his thumbs, you know? It's, it's like they do all this witchcraft, they do all this witchy kind of things. They tie things, they tie things around their wrists, you know, for wealth. It's like demonic incantations, witchy kind of stuff. But it works, it somehow, I, I'm not saying that's good, it's not good at all, but it, it somehow it works for them because they have the sense of community together. And then you come to the church that church is all divided and all screwed up. Someone lift your hand and say it has to change. Now, now let me tell you, you can't pray for the outside too much. You'll, you'll get crazy with that. You have to pray for your own environment. I want to go a little bit far in this uh, to say, like, I, I don't really regard what anybody else is doing unless it's beneficial to me. That's kind of where I'm at. And... I wish I had thought more like that some time ago. I mean, I invested a lot of time being friends with a lot of different people, a lot of different ministries, a lot of different churches, and I thought, where did it go? Where did it go? So now I'm wisely taking all of my time, resources, whatever, to only invest in something that's for the mission that I'm on and leave the others on the outside because they don't care about you anyway. 
And I got to rebuke a lot of people for wasting your time looking at what everybody else is doing. You know what they preached about. You know their conference schedule. You know, like, who's there. You're, like, studying them up, uh, 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 watching their stuff and all that. You, you know everything about them. But are you even in the equation there? No. Then don't waste your time. And it's a bit hard. It's a decision you have to make to say, I'm switching this off. I no longer care. You know, I get emails from a certain ministry, and they're also online with their services. I'd watch every time I could. I, I'd see what they do at the different time of the service, and then I'd be like knowing what it's all about, and i read their email. Just lately, like, lately I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I don't have any time for that. I'm done. I'm done with that. And I thought, you know, this is like, and I value their friendship and relationship. It's, I do, I do. It's okay. And their anointing is good. But I don't have time to get all, because it's not, it's not in the equation of what God's called me to do. And the same God that called them to do anything called me. You understand? You have to evaluate and value yourself, to validate yourself as God's validating you, and raise up the work. If you think it's important, to fulfill the mission that God has put you on, then you need to focus on that mission. If you think, if you, if you don't think it's valuable enough, hey, I, I know one man of God, my a dear friend of mine, Dr. Mike Murdoch, uh, had a guy come up to him and said, uh, oh, I don't know about what you're saying about this, you know, I, I don't, he doesn't like it or something. Dr. Murdoch looked at him in the eye, very stern and serious, and said, well, son, have you written a book about your philosophy? The guy looked shocked and said, no. He said, well, I think a lot about what God's told me. And I put it all in books. In fact, I have hundreds of books. How many of them have you read? The guy was red-faced, ashamed, and went, put his tail back between his legs and ran away. He said, when you can document your persuasions, which are wrong, and, you know, send me the book. That's a real way to fix somebody that's a fool, huh? Praise the Lord. And the guy just ran away, put his tail back between his legs and ran away. Like a little scared puppy dog that got hit with something. Praise the Lord. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Ka ra ti sha ka ha ti. Partnership, partnership, partnership. To share in the prophets. Now, in the business world, they say profits and losses because they make that covenant together, but that's in the world system. You don't know how it's going to go. The richest man in India, uh, Mukani, I think his name is, uh, the one guy is the richest man in Asia, and the brother inherited money from the father, and he lost it all. Two, two brothers, same family, same father, same wealth source. One prospered, one went down. So you see, like, in the, you don't know in the world system how it's going to go like that all the time. But in the kingdom of God, there's only win-win. Jesus said, give, Luke 6, 38, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom at the same measure that you measure out, the same measure to be measured back to you again. Second Corinthians 9, 8 says, so bountifully you'll reap bountifully, sparingly, sparingly. So uh, he, he talked about a thousand times more in Deuteronomy 1, 11. Jesus talked about the hundredfold. He said, you give up this and this and this to walk with me. For my sake in the Gospels, he said, uh, you'll receive a hundredfold back, a hundred times. Even more than a hundred new cycles of what you gave will be released for your one act. That's not, there's no, someone lift your hands and get excited. There's no loss in that equation. So it's not profits and losses, you know? I was in Washington, D.C. I went to preach uh, in a conference there, and I, I cut my trip short. I was going to stay before the Sunday, but uh, the biggest storm they'd ever had in 50 years was coming. And it was going to hit on Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, and after I finished speaking Saturday afternoon, I got back up to my hotel room and I felt very uneasy and I heard the weather report and the Lord said to me, son, pack up and leave now. I said, Lord, I'll be ready in 10 minutes. 
I put my stuff back in my suitcases, brought my suitcases down to the lobby. I called the host. I said, come and get me. Uh, where you want to go? I said, I'll tell you. Uh, come and let's go to the airport. I had changed my ticket. And the airline, because I, I told them something clever, <laughs> I can't remember what I said. I just had a creative thought to tell them something like, uh, I can't remember what it was now. And, and they said, okay, we'll change your ticket for free, no change fee. I was like, pa, that's gone. By Sunday afternoon, there was like almost two feet of snow on the ground, and they canceled all the flights in Washington, D.C. I would have been there until Tuesday or Wednesday, sitting in a hotel, wondering, you know, praying, wondering how I'm going to get out of there. I said, no, I can't take it. Send me back to the tropics. So I went down south to the beautiful palm trees and the beaches with 75 degrees. I said, that's better than being here in the snowstorm. And I just beat it. But I was there, and we get out of the airport, and this, this son of the pastor picks me up. We're driving to the hotel from the airport. It's quite a long little ride. And um, puts on the Christian radio station. And here's, here comes one of these contemporary gospel Christian artists, and they go, well, you win some and you lose some. I was like, what? Like country kind of, well, you know, you win some and you lose some. And I thought, and they're talking about the Lord. I said, no, 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 listen here. With me, when, when it's with God and it's the perfect way, there's only win, there's no loss. And I thought, can you please turn? I said, son, can you please change that? He says, I can't. I can't do this. He was gracious enough to change it, change it to another station. Then, it, then the political station came on. And it was all this blasphemy, I mean, this uh, propaganda lies for the Democrats, even interviewing Pelosi and all that. Heard her voice, drunken Pelosi. You know, they say her liquor bill uh, 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 on, the, on the flights funded by the government was, in, was six figures, over $100,000. Over $100,000, her drinking on the planes, plane flights. $100,000! That's 10 million Kenyan shillings? 10 million! Can you imagine the politician, he's on the flights, and the government's paying for it, and it's, he drinks 10 million of liquor. Would you, would you say that's okay? You'd be like, oh my God, but in America, these, these... See, this is the thing, when they get in control of one of the... One of the, bo the legislative bodies, like the House of Representatives, they play all these games, they put their people in, but I'm believing come November they're all going to be tossed back out in Jesus' name, and what's right can happen in America more so. We have this reprieve, we have this wind of opportunity, now that we need to really take it by force, and the church needs to really get out and vote. I, I believe they will, I believe. And look what the Democrats have. Mixed up Sanders, Gay Pete, who else? Pocahontas, lying Pocahontas, who else? I can't even think of the rest. Oh, creepy Joe Biden. He's way down, by the way. He was supposed to be the golden boy. It's like he's already lost the election. And Bloomberg, I don't know what's wrong with him. He was a Republican, I think, when he was a, the Democrat, uh, the mayor of New York. He seemed like he's doing a few good things there, but now he's gone totally off on another tangent. They're just really mixed up, and Trump is just going to sail right through with it. But we're praying for the local governments, that the local seats, the House of Representatives and the Senate increases, and the control is back where things can get done without hindrance, in Jesus' name. So we have that window of opportunity. It's very important because, believe me, the, pow the pulsation and the powder keg of this evil of liberalism, socialism, communism, demonic entities. You see, you see how they're trying to rise up. And you get them in the seat of power, oh Lord, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna be end of days. End of days. So what do you do when that time comes and you're still alive on the earth and the rapture hasn't happened yet? You need to be a partner with God. You need to be a partner with the anointing. Workers of God, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. Workers together, we receive the grace of God. 
1 Corinthians 3, 9, we're laborers together with God and, of course, with each other. Jesus said, when you're abiding in me, you can bear fruit, but the tree can't bear fruit of itself. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, John 15, 4 and 5, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, that means the life source of nourishment is coming to it, he said, no more can you except by me, except you abide in me. And the seventh verse of John 15 said, you abide in me and my words abide in you, and then you'll ask what you will and it'll be done for you. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Father, thank you for the power of connection with the anointing that'll bring people through all these rough times. I'm really thrilled, though it seems a bit, a bit rough at times, to share all these things, but it's reality. People need to have a reality check, a wake up, say, what's happening with my life? Let me tell you, the only hope that we really have is in God. The only hope that we have, the only way that we're really going to get truly blessed is being, by being connected with the anointing. Very, very important. That's, that's how it's all going to happen. That's the grace factory. That's the power factory. That's the wealth factory. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying this to shake people up also. Not that I have any, you know, some clever intention about it, but the Holy Ghost is speaking here. We need to like feel a little bit like, wow, am I secure enough in my life the way it is? What if something blew the other way? Am I okay? Uh, has God got my back? Am I connected to the right power source? Can I count on that? Let me tell you, you can count on the anointing. Not on man, but on the anointing. You can count on the anointing. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. You can count on the grace of God and the power of God to provide and produce and bless and cause profit and cause health and healing and increase and deliverance. And God will also give you ideas as your partner, and he'll give you ideas on what to do in your life, what business to go into, what to do, how to, how to process all that, how to get into all that, how to flow in all that. He will. He'll help you by the touch of God. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's by inspiration. Last night, the whole night, I tell you, I was up till... I just, someone's almost coming up. I just, I just was writing and listening to God, talking to me. The day before was like that, and the day before was like that, and the day before was like that. But it's been, it's been a chaotic time, a lot of stuff going on. But I'm telling you, the Lord has made it very, very clear to me, the assignment that he has, the divine mission, and some ways of getting it done. Another thing you, you really need to be careful about and I'm saying this to everyone in the body of Christ at large, uh, worldwide. Be very careful about just throwing your money to anywhere where you, you're just putting it in and thinking that it's automatic that you're going to get a big blessing because that seems like a successful thing that I'm sowing into. You better hear God. I brought a very large thing. I can't talk about it. It's, it's, you know, it'll scare people very large thing to somebody and they prayed oh this will happen this year this will happen this year this should happen for you none of it happened none of it not one of the words came to pass not one and I thought oh my god it's okay though I planted it into a great project and that'll bear fruit later and I pray it'll come up on the other side because when you give to God you really don't lose. But I thought, will I do this again with them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So this week, God gave me the most amazing, clever idea. Oh, my. Oh, my Jesus. I love you so much. Gave me the most creative, brilliant idea on, on what to do. Something. And I'm working on that right now. It is absolutely phenomenal. The Lord can talk to you. I mean, that, that's that's... Something that he says, I'm going to bless you. Here's, another, here's a principle. When you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. My dear friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch, wrote that quip by the Holy Ghost. 
When you want something you've never had before, you have to do something you've never had before. Don't be afraid to step out on the waters and, and, and th even on thin ice if you feel or step out on the branch and you think the branch is going to break and you're going to fall down. Well, you got to take a risk. And you may feel a little bit nervous about it, but push it. Push the envelope. Push it. Because that could be the very thing that God's in. You can't be doing the same old, same old, expecting something different. Albert Einstein, the brilliant, what we call the brilliant man. Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is this, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If, if you're going to get something new, you have to do something new. If you're going to charter a new course and change course into something greater, you have to shift into something greater. And that's with relationships, with people, with environments, with all kinds of stuff. And be careful about being divided because the house divided can't stand. Jesus said that. If you fight amongst yourselves, you're acting foolish. You need to stop that. If you're fighting also in, inside yourself, uh, wrestling something, then that's foolish. You got to get all in unison together and switch it on and go for it. And the grace of, of this anointing, the, the, the glory of God that's upon my life in ministry, it helps produce that for people. That you get, people get more focused, more centered, flowing in the thing that he's ordained. And he, he even gives people ideas on what to do and they prosper. I'm hearing testimonies back about it all the time. Someone wrote me the other night, and they wrote that, uh, thank God for you, prophet of God, when I was with you last, I was healed. And uh, it's amazing. person had a very bad accident, broken bones every which way, and was in a real mess for a long time, and they thought the Lord just touched them and put it back together. They said, I'm, they, they wrote me to tell me they're healed since they were here with us. Imagine that. People are writing me talking about their business enterprises are taking off. One, a few in America, a few in uh, Europe, a few in um, Africa here. Tremendous, tremendous miracles of, of financial increase for people. Great stuff that, that was born out of the anointing, the power of partnership. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven that's coming upon your chosen ones. Thank you for this, that you'll give them your own mind and heart and direction of how to increase in this thing called prosperity, in this thing called flourishing, in this thing called success, in this life called fruitfulness, production, purpose, success, financial increase, entrepreneurial things. And, and I want to talk about the, the ministry people. The ministry people also, you know, you, your, your, your organization needs to be flourishing. And it's not business as you, you see, people think that business is something else and ministry is something else. As long as you think like that, have at it. You're deceived. You've locked yourself in a closet and you can't get out. You don't have the key. I was in a mall yesterday. I went into this one bathroom and I pulled the door. When I got inside, there was no handle. I saw these blithering idiots. It took me time to get out. I didn't want to touch this stupid thing because I think it was so greasy. Like the door, like the bathroom's in here. You see the way they are? And they don't care at all. These people are sick. Demented people. They think they have the right to take money from people, but they don't want to provide any service. Some of these stinking old buildings in the city here, they're the worst. They look nice from the outside, but inside they're horrible. Everything's broken. So it took me a while to get out took some real uh, manual dexterity to hold on to something. I actually took 2,000 shilling notes and I put them in and put it around so that I didn't have to touch that metal thing and I had to pull and there was nothing to grip and I had to pull that it went back then I had to pull again it took me I thought am I in here? I'm getting out of here one and the shilling the notes ripped you know so I just got a coffee I threw it at them here take it Chica. Give me my cappuccino. They didn't even see it was ripped on the end. Don't, don't tell me they know it is ripped. It's good, man. Use it. 
I mean, it wasn't torn off. It was just like had a slice in it. <laughs> so I finally, I finally thought, this is crazy. What God has for you is more than you can even imagine. How much he wants to bless you, even in a crooked and untoward place, you have no idea. There are people that some prosper, some suffer. What I was trying to say was people deceive themselves. I had a guy who was given was given my number by uh, uh, on Facebook, my Facebook page, by someone in America who's a longtime friend, many many years, and. The guy had to write me like the, people like they apologized for something that there was no question asked. And said, well, we're not into after money. We're after preaching the gospel. I thought, why did you even have to say that? Because now you've disrespected money by saying you're not after it. You're not after it. You won't have any. Praise the Lord. Get your methodology straight. Get your head straight. Get your confession right. Don't say something stupid like that. We're not after money. Who asked you anyway if you were after money? Did I think you were after money? See, the guy's already convicted in his heart because he thinks, here's Mazungo. I'm going to write to Mazungo, and he thinks I'm looking for money. And I didn't think that at all. In fact, it came by the way. And people that are, they ain't getting any. Praise the Lord. I'm at a point now, I won't even give you a pe even a shilling coin I won't give you. In fact, I take one. If I had it, I'll bounce it off your forehead and see if I can... If I can aim, if I can hit you, it'll bounce and go bing, go da 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 on the floor. Go pick it up if you want it, but that's all you, I wouldn't give you anything. Then the stories, you know, some guy from Utawala, you know, you ever heard of that? I don't even know what that is. It's in my phone. Look at this guy. I don't even want to waste time. Someone from somewhere of somewhere in Utawala or something, and he's locked out and his daughter's coming, he doesn't have anything, please help. I thought, dude, I don't even know you. I can't answer that. What appreciation would you have for it? Did, would God even tell me to do such a thing? He wouldn't. He's not telling me that. I love these people that also think their prophecy is just free and cheap. Lately, I have a, new, a slant on that too, you know, like an idea from the Lord about that. Lord, have mercy. Oh, prophesy, you know. Prophesy, man of God, prophesy. Give me a word. I'm like, why? One guy in South Africa, he's a well-known uh, guy. Uh, he wrote me like that, and I, I wrote back. I said, where's our relationship? Do we have a relationship? And he wrote, wrote these two words, please explain. I thought, well, I wrote back finally. If I have time, when I have a minute, we can talk. What do you think? I'm just sitting here. I have nothing else to do, and I'm just going to let go and start getting the word. And But some people, you, you don't know. You, you can unlock the gift if you talk to it. There's also connection, but there's, you, you also have to be uh, in some kind of connection with it. It'll flow. Like someone was calling me from America about their situation, same situation they've been in. It's really a terrible thing. And... When they finally got me on the phone, I took me many days and I finally called them back. I thought I just felt like convicted to call them back. And this word was released, like a sword of the word. Release, I'm done. We don't need to talk anymore. Done. So the gift is there. But everybody seems to want it frivolously. But for partners, people that are connected, people that go out of their way, you don't know what you're doing. You're investing in your own life. And the power of the glory of God is going to move upon you in Jesus' name to make you prosper and flourish in all these crazy, crooked highways, byways, upon your roots, passageways, wherever you go. You're going to be the one to prosper. People are marvelous. How, do you, how are you being successful? How are you busy? How are you making it? By the power of God. The touch of the anointing. Now, I've said a lot. I'm trying to really communicate this point from my heart. I, really, I don't feel like I've really done it justice enough, but I'm going to close here. But I felt 
I, I, something I really, I'm trying to get across it. People, a lot of people don't see this. They don't know where I started. It's the most, un, it's the most misunderstood, not understood thing. And it, but yet it's the most powerful partnership. Now these preachers that cry, people that write me from Utawala or wherever it is, people that write, what, where is your connection? I told you the story about the guy that I helped and he was supposed to be here, uh, be around and trying to pursue and connect with, be stay connected. He takes off after I gave him something. So I thought, boy, you really helped me. You closed the door to all these other people. They're all going to cry. And if I were to tell them you're the one to blame, they'll want to lynch you and kill you. You better thank God for the mercy. I don't tell them all. There's a guy, his name is, and here's his phone number. He's the one that caused you not to get, because the door is closed now. You, you could abuse someone for so long that it gets to be foolishness, and you got to wake up and say, no, no, I can't. So another guy comes. They always test you. Oh, the school fees for the kid. The kid's going to get locked out of the school. Help. I said, no. And I asked the person that referred to me to them, a high-level guy. He said, just tell them no. I said, I did, and I'm keeping it like that. Whatever work they're doing for me and whatever they were doing, they're getting paid something for that. That's legitimate. <coughs> That's it. There's nothing else. Don't come to me with your stories. Then the guy wrote me one day again, pushed it again, said he was sick, needed medicine, but it was a small amount. So, of course, I thought, oh, that's a nice seed. I'd help somebody get some medicine. So I sent him the thing, you know, small amount. It was okay. That's all right. But you, 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 have, you, have, a, you have a life to take care of. You got kids, right? You, 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 you got some woman, now you got a baby. What does it have to do with me? Praise the Lord. You did all that, and you want someone else to handle it. But what, when, when this becomes a, a way of lifestyle, of connection with the anointing, I see it, it's, the, it's one of the most rare, rarest things where people can really value that. Even a lot of people, they only contact you because you're anointed, they just want a miracle. They're not really interested in the word. They're not interested in doctrine. They're not interested in the kingdom at all. They just want to alleviate their problem however way they can. That's cheap. At any rate, they don't know, and I'm trying to teach this so people can know and, do, and take action, that when you activate all this as a lifestyle, prosperity will be your portion. And you won't have need of it. You won't have lack of anything. And that day is upon us. Father, thank you for the grace of heaven that's causing people to understand this thing about this mystery called partnership and the power of it, the power of partnership. And someone says, okay, I got it. How do I do it? Okay, there'll be the information on the screen. You can sow in Kenya. There's ways to do it. All of the things, I don't want to mention all the things right now, but they'll be on the screen. And also you can go to our website. There's a list of it all there, how to do it on thomasmanton.com. It's my name, .com. thomasmanton.com. And you can get all the information there on how to become a partner and so and connect with this grace. Uh, in future days, we're going to be sharing a lot of testimonies of business people. People that are really getting blessed, they've been just like catapulted to higher levels since their connection with us. Miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance, miracles of relationships being mended, all these kind of things I'm hearing about. Broken situations that were going on for a very long time and it's like in an instant because of their connection. It's just getting fixed. Partnership. It's so powerful in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Smith in the fourth. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Praying for you. I'm praying for you.